Today we're going to be looking at the Sailor Professional Gear King of Pen and this one is in the resin finish uh, in black with the gold plating. So I'm going to be taking a, a look at the pen later on. Um, this pen was purchased used so all it came with was this box uh, with a magnetic uh, opening Inside there was a little cushion, or there is a little cushion where the pen uh, resided. Uh, price tag 66,000 yen. Uh, that translates to roughly slightly less than 600 US dollars. Instruction booklet. And that was pretty much what I got. Um, so looking at the pen, Lots of times you get uh, reviewers online saying that this is a massive pen. Um, just kind of put paid to that claim, right? I've just I have a just a normal Stabilo uh, ballpoint pen that's actually longer than the King of Pen. So I mean, it's definitely not the length that it's big. So, but rather the the width, right? Uh, length wise. I always like to measure my pens, you know, when it's uncapped, you know, basically uncapped, it's 12, roughly 12 and a half centimeters uh, long from tip of the nib to the back of the barrel. Uh, and that makes it a short pen for me, right? For me, my benchmark is roughly the 13 centimeter or so length. Uh, the section is rather thick though at about 13 uh, millimeters and you know sometimes people say the thicker the better but for me it kind of falls out of the what I would say as a very comfortable section which is around the 11 to 12 uh, millimeter range so dimensions aside let's take a look at the pen finial with a little bit of a embossing or kind of a raised uh, anchor the anchor logo is the, the it probably is the older version of the logo um, 2021 sailor came up with a new version of the logo which is nice uh, clip the clip is pretty much the same as i have a pro gear classic it's just a sized up version of the usual sailor clip you have the center band which is probably aside from the nib the, the distinguishing factor of the pro gear. So we have this huge uh, chunk of center band and what it says here is uh, Sailor Japan founded 1911. So no mention of King of Pen which is kind of strange in my opinion. Section, I mean the sorry that the cap is has a bit of weight to it I just feel that the weight is actually in the, the top part of the cap. Uh, there is also a little plastic sleeve in, inside which probably won't, won't come through from the camera but uh, uh, that keeps the pen from drying out. In terms of the rest of the pen, um, as I mentioned earlier on, a uh, pretty short uh, barrel, right? It's uh, nothing, nothing much to write home ab about. It's a very light a barrel made of resin, a little gold band at the end of the pen, and the, the end of the, the barrel is, is kind of flat like that. Uh, it has you know resin threads or plastic threads. Inside uh, of the body you get metal threads, you get a big chunk of metal uh, down here, you get kind of strange little window down here that lets you see the the ink level of the converter um, and you get the converter itself so the converter is just very carefully take it out so the, the converter is just like a standard uh, sailor converter it, it's the same converter that's used even in the smallest pens uh, and basically uh, that's it so I mean this uh, pen actually came with a little o-ring down here I'm not sure whether all the pens um, have that, but mine came with that. 
The other thing to take note of is this metal section. This is all metal, right? It's an alloy of some sort. I'm sure it's not uh, pure gold and it is rather heavy, right? So what it means is when you're holding the pen like so, you feel quite a lot of weight in the middle of the pen, right? The, the consequence of that is the pen is center weighted. So moving up to the top of the pen, you get the section which is pretty short. As I mentioned earlier on, it's very girthy, right? Uh, you know, it's probably usable, but uh, I'm not sure how it is, you know, with long writing se um, sessions. And then we get to the nib. So uh, it's, it's kind of the, the same design as other Sailor nibs. So basically, if you look at, you know, the uh, Pro Gear standard, it looks the same. Uh, basically, what it says in uh, on the nib is uh, 1911 with the anchor, and it says 21 carat, and it says 875, which is the 87.5 percent of gold. It has the little sailor, another sailor logo, and it says Japan. On the left hand side of the nib, it says medium because. Uh, King of Pen typically comes with medium or broad nibs. Just when we have the nib out for display, uh, I want to compare it very quickly with my Mont Blanc 149 in uh, platinum. And, you know, you know, kind of, you know, if you look at it, the two nibs side by side, you know, you can actually get a sense of how similar the two nibs are in terms of the scroll work, in terms of the lettering. Um, I guess there's no coincidence that the placement of the 1911 is on top. Same for the 4810, um, for the Mont Blanc is on top as well and so on. So, but one big difference, uh, it's actually in the length of the slit uh, that separates the two tines. For the Mont Blanc, it's rather long, right? You can see that the the slit kind of ends at the middle of the nib. The sailor, it's kind of at the top part. Um, and that, what that normally does, it, it probably gives you a hint that the 149 would be the more, would be the softer nib. But that's not the case. And the reason for that is if I move the nibs to the side, you can see that, I hope you can see that the Mont Blanc uh, you know, material used in the nib, it's a lot more and it's, you know, basically it's a lot thicker uh, part of the nib down there. The consequence of having such a thin piece of material down here, um, you know, at, at the tying area means this is a very soft nib. So I'm going to put the pens away and I'm going to be doing a little bit of writing with my Hurlitz pad. So I'm going to raise the table a little bit to let you guys see the, the writing a little bit better. So, um, I'm going to be using this pen unposted, even though it's a bit short. Um, so this is the Sailor. King of Pen and that's in medium. So the nib is it's adequately wet, uh, not a gusher, right? Um, it's soft. And um, 
you can get line variation if you kind of dare to press down on it. I don't, I don't advocate actually pressing down very hard on the nib because of you know, for me personally, if you saw the side profile just now, it's a very thin piece of metal down there, and it is twenty one carat. Um, so I I don't actually do a lot of um, pressure when I'm writing with this pen. Uh, one thing to kind of uh, take note of is, uh, and I'm sure a lot of reviews reviewers actually have mentioned this, there is kind of uh, a little bit of feedback, not unpleasant, but there is feedback on the nib. It's smooth with, with a tinge of feedback. The feeling that I would kind of classify this as, as is kind of like a brush feel. Um, which is pleasant uh, to use. Um, however, if you're looking for a very glass, glassy smooth nib, this is not one of them. Some more closing thoughts about the Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear. If nib performance is your overriding priority, so I did a poll recently on my on the community. Uh, lots of people actually indicated or the overriding, like 57% of people actually indicated that nib performance was their priority when buying a fountain pen. So if you're one of those people, um, can't go wrong with this nib. I mean, it will perform. It will give you what you would expect for a number eight, number nine size nib. Uh, softness, smoothness with that tinge of feedback, that brush light feel that Sailor is famous for and so on. Um, for value, surprisingly enough, um, and I haven't really done a lot of digging, but if you were to look around for this size nib in gold, you know, Sailor is probably one of the more affordable choices out there. Uh, I wouldn't want to say $600 is af affordable, but it is what it is. Uh, the other thing to consider is um, this issue or, or this factor of brand, right? If you are already using other Sailor pens, like maybe the Pro Gear Classic or any other model, um, you might find uh, that family uh, similarity in getting the king, king of pen. And you might, because of that reason, and maybe that reason only, you might want to consider getting that. Uh, for me, uh, personally though, I think this pen comes with a few compromises. First of all, comfort. I mean, if you were writing a page or two, uh, perhaps it wouldn't really come into play. But for me, uh, the section is really a little bit too big and the pen is a little bit too short. So. Uh, to kind of close with that question, which I normally ask at the end of my videos, would I get this pen again if I had lost it or damaged it? The answer for me is probably no. Uh, what I would consider though, and that's my closing thought is, uh, consider getting this pen used. There are probably not that many out there, but if you can find one of these pens used, you can actually pick up this pen for for uh, you know and get bring up the value benchmark. Uh, the other thing you might want to consider is getting a used vintage, uh, probably the 60s or the 70s or the 80s uh, 149, right? And you know this is a modern 149, and that's where it's stiff and uh, glassy smooth and all that. And I believe that if you get uh, maybe an extra fine or fine one um, uh, nib for 149 uh, in that vintage era, you might uh, get some of the attributes that this pen provides. Right? I'm not 100% sure because I don't have one of those pens. Uh, that's just my, my guess. So thanks again for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, and you know give me give me a like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video bye bye